You know what's really irritating? Pests in the garden. And I'm not talking about bugs, those are irritating, but it's the four-legged ones that are really irritating. But I've got a few methods I've tried, some that didn't work at all, some that work a little bit, and some that work pretty darn good that I wanna share with you. And I think uh, once you put this in your head, it's not gonna irritate you a whole bunch. All right, let's go. Those peppers are looking really good. But you know what? This year, and actually the last few years, I've had a really big problem with pests, and I'm talking about the four-legged pests. You know, like rabbits, squirrels, armadillos, all those things, deer. Um, I, I've really fought with them in the garden, and I've tried not to do things um, like this, which is a kind of fence around the garden. But at some point, you have to make a decision. So I wanna kinda of go with you guys some of the things that I've done that, uh, that haven't really worked very well. Um, and I wanna tell you what those are, and they're some of the most recommended things to do for some of these pests. Um, and we're also gonna talk about some things that do kind of work, and we're gonna talk about some things that really work well. If you saw up in the top of the video, this is a sponsored uh, video, because a company saw one of my videos and they saw that I was having problems with armadillos and uh, some voles and things like that. So they went ahead and sent me some stuff. So let's talk about the things that I've tried that didn't work and the things I've tried that did work. Let's get our hands dirty. So when we talk about pests in our garden, it's the four-legged ones that are really a problem. And I've dealt with a bunch of different ones here. We've dealt with uh, armadillos and the voles like we talked about, rabbits, deer. But I think we want to break this into two different categories. And the first category would be diggers. So essentially, in my case, that's armadillos and voles. Now, armadillos and voles do all kinds of damage underground. In fact, I've had uh, situations where They've, uh, armadillos have dug up the entire parts of the garden. They even made a burrow in it, uh, which was kind of crazy. And then I've also had voles, which have dug in the garden and even in really low levels of uh, soft dirt, they can make this tunnel that doesn't even collapse. And I didn't know that when they were eating the roots of my garlic, I pulled them up and the whole tunnel collapsed. It was crazy. So what are some of the things that I've tried to uh, unsuccessfully get rid of armadillos? Well. I've tried the most tried and true methods that are recommended by just about every ag extension service on the planet. Uh, with armadillos, I've tried uh, both kind of a deterrent, uh, a couple types of deterrent, and I've also tried mechanical trapping. So the deterrents I used were uh, Irish soap, and we'd make these little sachets. We'd put them on landscape pens all around the perimeter of our front yard and uh, tried to keep them out that way. I went back the next day, it didn't work at all. The other method I tried was mechanical, and that's a live trap. So the idea with armadillos is that if they are, because they don't have good eyesight, they'll hit something and they'll follow it along its path. So by putting two boards at the edge of a live trap and angling it in, the armadillo should hit the board, follow it all the way into the trap, they're trapped, you can get rid of them. That didn't work either. I've either got the smartest armadillos on the planet, or really bad luck, or I don't know, something else. I also tried other deterrent methods such as hot sauce. Now I use Louisiana hot sauce and I put it all the way around the edge of my garden. And at first I thought this was really working because I saw them on my game camera come in and move out and they just walked away. But then I watched some more and really they just walked away the first time and they just kind of moved quickly over it. And that's when they really destroyed the garden. Voles are really kind of complicated. They tend to tear up root crops because that's where you'll have insects and things underground there. They go after grubs as well, just like the armadillos do, but they're really a pain. We've tried all kinds of uh, lethal methods um, in the past because we got so desperate at one point, we've used um, lethal traps, uh, like spring-loaded traps. We've tried poison peanuts. We even tried flooding the holes with water to get them to come out, and it just none of it worked. So those are kind of our, our diggers. Now let's talk about the foragers. With the foragers, we mainly have deer and rabbits. Now squirrels do things too, but they're not really foraging. They're just kind of digging up and planting uh, acorns. But the deer would come in and they would eat everything. And if you saw my lemon video, you, that's why I planted my lemons in pots because they'd even eat the thorns off the lemon brush. They'd eat entire tops of peppers and tomatoes, things they're not supposed to eat. Uh, and it didn't bother them at all. I put, um, old CDs hung on strings spinning around to cause a reflection. All that did was make them stop a little bit and kind of get curious, but in the end they came back and ate everything. They took out all of my Jerusalem artichokes. Um, and rabbits are kind of the same way. Rabbits, they come in and you can scare them off, but they're so quiet coming in, you don't even know they're there. 
So they can forage and take things out really, really quickly. In fact, rabbits have taken out almost all of my leafy greens one season. Deer devastated my garden. One deer, she was a mama deer and she gave birth within the next few days. So I, I, I forgive, but she ate everything in my garden this year in the late spring. So, uh, those CDs didn't work for that, didn't work for the rabbits. I also hung up t-shirts that I'd worked in outside, so it kind of smelled like me all over and around the garden. That didn't work. I just, I just couldn't keep them out. So those are some of the failed methods that we've used to uh, try to keep those out. So now we discuss some of the things that don't work for our two groups of animals uh, that we're dealing with here, both the, um, the digging variety and the foraging variety. I thought I'd talk about something that might work or might work for some of you. I've tried things like this before and uh, some of them do work. I think a lot of it just kind of comes down to what you're trying to defend against. But after taking a look at one of my videos, a company reached out to me and asked if I could take a look at some of their products. They thought they could help me with you know, some of the problems I had, particularly they saw the ginger video where I talked about the uh, armadillo damage and uh, and some other things. So they sent me a couple products. They did not pay me any money for this. I'm not making any money on this. They simply sent them to me to see if they'd help out and maybe if they could help you guys out. They sent me two products. The name of the company is X-Pest. Uh, they actually, they kind of specialize in non-chemical, uh, non, um, non-lethal ways to get rid of pests in and around your yard, your garden, your house, things like that. And they sent us two things. They sent us uh, two e-moles. This is the uh, e-mole 360 degree solar motion sensor. And this is the uh, stick, which has got a uh, sonic repellent that goes in the ground. Both of them are, are solar powered. Uh, you can also charge this one up with the, um, with the USB cable. So uh, let's open them up and take a look at them. So first of all, we have the E-Mole, and uh, as you see, it's running in 24-hour mode. It's got a night mode. It also uh, can charge uh, via solar panel, or you can charge this one up with the USB as well. Um, it says cats, rats, raccoons, dogs, skunks, squirrels, and I'm sure deer to some extent, uh, and rabbits as well. So we definitely have uh, cats, but they don't mess with the garden too much. Raccoons, they don't mess with it too much. Dogs, squirrel, yeah, those things can. And definitely rabbits can too. And I've used one of these things before um, to kind of keep predators away from my chickens, which included um, raccoons and possums and other things, and also foxes. So let's just take a look at this. Our instructions, and this seems to be the main device. So this is it here. Now what I think is unique about this, and we need to probably get this off of here, is that it's three-sided. So everything I've ever used in this regard has always been one-sided. Now it has a, um, a blue light that it, emit, it emits. Um, it also has a, a bright flashing light here that's white and it emits a sound as well. It's motion activated between 13 and I think 33 feet and uh, it continually sounds until the animal's gone uh, or waits for it to come back again and, and resounds. Now they recommend uh, from what I read on the website that you charge this up for at least six hours prior to using it or let it get 12 to 24 hours of sun. Uh, so I have not charged this yet, but I will charge it and we'll get it all set up and ready to go. It also comes with these stakes. So you put the stakes in the ground, this goes into the bottom and you're ready to go. Now they do recommend this being at least nine inches above the ground uh, to make sure it doesn't get waterlogged. It is waterproof uh, with uh, some very high level waterproof uh, circuitry in there. And it also has buttons on the bottom. So you got power and turn your blue light off. You can change the mode from night mode to 24 hour mode. And this is how you would charge it via USB. So we'll put all that together here in a minute and we'll take a look and see how that does. It also comes with a charging cable. So our next item is the solar mole repeller stake. Now, oh, and there's two in here. So this is good for moles, voles, and those kinds of things, groundhogs, a lot of the um, subterranean type critters that would eat your roots and things like that. So we got the box. We have two of these, and this is probably the instructions. Let's take a look at one of these. Okay, so it's got a power button here at the bottom. It's also got a solar panel on top, which is really cool. I don't see any way to charge this. I don't believe you can char uh, charge this one, uh, but it doesn't take a lot of power. The way I understand that this works is you put it in the ground all the way to about here. And anytime, uh, it, I guess it periodically puts out an ultrasonic sound uh, that basically irritates the animal and keeps it away. So we do have some voles around now. Uh, and so we'll stick this in the area and uh, we'll see how it does. And uh, we'll come back and check it out. So let's go put these things in place, look at where we're gonna place them and get it figured out.
So this area uh, usually gets a, quite a bit of squirrel activity as well as um, armadillos and things like that. This right here, this is an armadillo here. This is armadillo, this is armadillo. We got a few squirrel uh, areas in here and uh, you can see that uh, they've kind of torn up this area. So I thought the best way to do this since we're getting that kind of stuff in the area and I know rabbits have come through this area too beside the coop, this would be a great place for this, uh, this particular product. And I think it'll work pretty good. So it says to stick this in the ground first. So we're gonna find a spot here in the middle and push this in. And that's pretty sturdy. And then we're going to put this guy on. Actually, I'm gonna turn it on first. So it has a power button like we saw before and you turn the blue light off. This also changes the modes. I'm gonna put it in night mode uh, just because I don't think I need it during the day and the chickens will set it off like crazy. In fact, they'll probably be setting it off here pretty quick. So let's get it on here and let's get it turned on. So first, power on. Making pretty good noise there. So we're gonna put this in, on here and we're gonna put it right there. Now, to uh, make sure that we can kind of test and see if this works, I'm just gonna cover all this stuff up and kind of get it flattened out. Okay. I think that's it. So now we'll wait and see how this thing works and uh, Keeps the area cleaned up. See how it does. So we're now gonna use these. Uh, these, again, just kind of emit an ultrasonic sound. They are waterproof and you're supposed to stick them in the ground as far as you can. Some of this ground is pretty hard um, and full of clay, so we're gonna do our best. But back here in front of our flag, there's a whole trail right here. This is actually an old path. It's hard to see on the camera, uh, but you can kind of see um, I'll show you some close-ups, but this area is new. This is just broken ground new today, and it's pushed up. It's elevated up around with, from the rest of the ground around it. So we're gonna put this in uh, both ends. See how easy that goes in? That's all the way to the bottom of that trench. So now we just turn it on. Can you hear that? And there we go. They're all set up. They've got sun so they can charge. They're at the end of the deal. They're not quite as ideally in the ground as they need to be, but that's as deep as I can get them without digging a hole. So for now, we're gonna give that a try, and uh, I do recommend they get down lower. But uh, we'll see what happens. So now that we've had the X-Pest products, the, the vol deterrent, as well as the um, other animal deterrent, we'll call it the foragers, uh, in the ground for a little while, and maybe not foragers, also the uh, diggers. But anyway, now we've had them in the ground a little while, I wanted to talk about it. Now, it's very important that we understand the temperature has changed pretty dramatically here uh, in the last week or so. We went from uh, very hot in the 80s to um, very cold. In fact, we got down to about 34 last night. Right now, Dump. Dump's over here just batting his wings around. Anyway, uh, we the temperature's changed quite a lot. In fact, I'm freezing right now and it's probably 50 degrees. I'm a Texan. What do you want? Anyway, um, we had a few days to review this, and uh, one of the interesting things I saw mainly about the foraging device, which is this one here, uh, is it's a little different than the ones I've used in the past. First of all, it's got three sides, and it does trigger on all three sides. Now, uh, dump, really? I'm telling you, that chicken. Anyway, uh, all the ones I used in the past had a couple very big differences. Number one, they didn't have sensors on all three sides, they had one side. The other difference was, is that the lights were different. The kind of eye shapes on the front of the device were not white lights. <coughs> Dump. They were not white lights, they were red lights, and there was no blue light on top. Now, the blue light's very interesting because if you notice it at night, it really is kind of distracting, it's neat. I haven't seen that before. And I did notice there were actively deer in the area, right in this area here in the woods, that they were coming near it. They didn't come very close though. In fact, you could hear them kind of agitated by it. Now, I imagine if you leave that long enough, they probably won't 
be too deterred by it, but it's something, and it's something different, and I really kind of like it. Uh, now, for the other part of it, the white lights on this thing, they really are bright, and it has this kind of weird clicking, high-pitched noise that I can't really hear, but I can kind of feel it. So I think that is a pretty good deterrent, and that's something different from the other ones I've tried. So what are the results? Well, the results are that we did not really have anything come into the area uh, that I know of. I caught nothing on my game cameras or my security cameras. Um, I did see over here in the ground that the squirrels had dug a little bit more, but this was off during the day. I only had it in night mode. So early in the morning, that could have happened. So I don't know. <coughs> Dumpy, really? I'm trying to make a video. He, j he just wants to be on camera. Anyway, so I don't really know if this thing works really well. I need to test it longer. I suspect it'll work some, but I think that in the end, if you have a really aggressive type animal or a really uh, brave animal, they're not going to be worried about this. Maybe the first time, not the second time. And I talked to the manufacturer and they kind of agree with that. They think that um, it will deter most meek or timid type animals, but it's not going to, it's not going to keep every animal away. So again, admittedly, this time of year when it gets snap cold like this, we don't see very many of these. In fact, I walked around the entire property almost and I did not see a single new tunnel anywhere. So I don't know how well this works, but I do have some experience with these in the past. But what I found is over time, they really keep coming back and you can keep moving it around and everything else, uh, but they don't seem to uh, stop them for very long. Now, the good news is they do move. So if you wanna put something like this in an area to keep them out of and you can get more of these, these came in a pack of two and I think they have multiple packs as well and upgraded versions that do some other things like a, a more of a vibration in them. You have to check the website to make sure. Also, these happen to be solar powered. Both of the devices are. In fact, that's something that I've seen unique to all the other methods like this we've tried, especially these, these Volan mole repellents, um, they are solar powered, so you don't have to worry about batteries. We were always worrying about batteries on the other ones. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is these products can definitely work. I don't think that they will stop them in a realistic way over time, unless you keep changing things up or adding things in, but they do work, especially on the timid animals, like I said. So it's something to keep in mind when you're, uh, when you're looking at a product like this. These are one of those things that kind of works. And I think that if you got the resources and the ability and the right type of area, meaning a small area you want to keep things away, these could work for you. So that's something that kind of works. Let's move on to what we do know works. So let's talk about what works for voles. Now this is the new garden area and I'll be doing something really soon for mainly my subscribers, just all you people uh, that have been here for me from the beginning and just tell you what's going on. But for now, this is hardware cloth. Now this is on top of my bed right now, but that was to help disperse the rain. And I'll have another video coming up on that later, not just this method, but others. And this is actually underneath both of these beds. This one actually has chain link under it. My other big bed over here has this underneath it. Vol don't like this. They can dig underneath the edge and they can uh, go into this part and come up from the inside of the garden. And this will keep them out. Hardware cloth lasts a very long time. The uh, chain link, I mean the uh, chicken wire, not so much, but this, this works. Right back where we started. Can you see why we have that new garden area? This is all in shade so much of the part of the day. But anyway, this is what else I did. So we talked about the voles and keeping them out from here. And really this only thing this whole method doesn't do to stop is voles. But if I had that hardware cloth in here, it would definitely work. So at first off, I started out putting a small fence for the rabbits. Of course, they jumped right over it. I thought it would deter the deer. That didn't matter. And all the way around, there's actually boards as well. The armadillos, they still push through some of this down here and they even went over the top of the boards. I added this this uh, animal netting, which I can link all this stuff down in the description if you want to pick any of this stuff up. But I use bamboo stakes to hold it in place. I've tied these string on here to alert the deer. And I'll tell you, that stopped everything. Foragers, no bunnies, no deer, nothing. They stayed completely away from this. I've even seen them come up and touch it. They don't like the feel of it and they went away. And they weren't curious about it anymore, which was great. But it didn't stop armadillos and it did not stop the voles. So, what can we do to stop those? Well, the armadillos, I know how to stop them. That Louisiana hot sauce, do you remember that from the beginning? I poured that all around the top, right at the edge here and on top of all the boards and in every situation, they touched it, their nose was there, they couldn't push through it and they went away. This 
works. So a physical deterrent, a fence or a barrier, the same fence that you see around out there, which is not the final fence, but a temporary barrier, it works. So in review, there are lots of methods you can find online and it may work for you, but it didn't work for me. Like the soap, like the mechanical traps, like the, the spring-loaded traps for voles. Uh, the, some methods that do work, like the X-Pest devices, I think they work probably better than some that I've had before in the past. I'm gonna keep them here and see how they go along the way. And if I see they don't work, I'll definitely update you. But this definitely works. So if you have the means, do this in your garden. If you're struggling with pests in your garden, or particularly animals, these are all great methods to try. And listen, I'm really thankful to X-Pest and Dylan for reaching out to me about this. I love trying their products. In fact, they've told me that if you guys wanna get a discount, it goes to the end of November of 2022, you can follow the links below and get a 20% discount on all the items in the shop. Um, now, I don't know if they're gonna extend that. If they do, I'll certainly let you know in the pinned comment, uh, but I think they're a really great company. The way they work, their communication is really good, and I, I think that's an important part of things. Now, remember, I did not get paid for this. They sent me these on their own, they didn't give me a dime, just the free product, and I'm not making any money anytime you buy this stuff. But if you do like it, go check it out. So I just wanted you to know that. So there's only four things you need to live a happy and well-balanced life. Number one is something to believe in. Number two is somebody to love. Number three is something to do. And number four is something to look forward to. Now, you know I look forward to hanging out with you guys in the comments. I love talking to you all the time. Guys, it's really important to me. If you like this video, make sure and share it with your friends. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And by the way, if you wanna learn another way right now, you can protect your garden from, not just from four-legged animals, but from all kinds of other things, check this video out right here. I think you're gonna love it. All right, guys, that's it. I love you and I'll see you in the next video. Doc out. Dump, dump, you wanted to be on camera, right? Here's your chance, buddy, dump. Dump, do you wanna be on camera? Dumpy, do you wanna be on camera? Looks like a chicken exploded in here. You guys could quit losing feathers. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi.